Uh, hello everyone, I'm uh, Shai Nae from uh, the Cloudify team and I'm going to present you uh, our journey in ONAP, actually how we use uh, in Cloudify and ONAP uh, to first bring up ONAP and orchestrate uh, very nice use cases. We started with one ONAP cluster, but now the demand uh, we see from different customers that they want to go multi-cloud, federated ONAP, as well as to the edge. As you know, ONAP now extends into Acrino, and uh, there are many nice uh, edge use cases. If I have time, I will actually talk about orchestration models to the edge, autonomous orchestration, etc. So let's start first with ONAP and uh, what is ONAP. Uh, I will go over in a briefly what is ONAP, then I will explain Tosca. We use Tosca as an intent-based model for orchestration. Uh, then I will uh, explain how we can deploy ONAP in one or more clusters uh, on, on top of Kubernetes and show uh, some nice use cases uh, using the ONAP uh, SDC, the service design, uh, the modeling, and the SO, the service orchestration, and Cloudify. Also, I have another use case. Uh, it's for a video streaming and... Uh, then I will move to the edge and show I, how we can actually orchestrate uh, an edge and a master uh, deployment. So let's start. Uh, what you see here, uh, you see the little box here, uh, the vertical box, that's the OM. That's the component uh, that installs uh, ONAP. But first, what is ONAP? ONAP is the open network automation platform. Uh, it has some uh, non-real-time components like the design time, the SDC, the service design and creation, where you create the design, create the artifacts, and then you push it into the SO, uh, the service orchestrator. Uh, the service orchestrator in turn calls the application controllers, the SDNC uh, for creating the networks, the AppC for creating the application workloads, and uh, it has um, something that is called ANI, that's the asset in inventory, the active inventory, and basically all the infrastructure uh, components should be uh, actually registered there. If you have an edge component, it should also be registered there. Uh, it's not to register subscribers or some other stuff that is coming on top from uh, uh, higher level components, but it should have all the uh, active infrastructure components. So this is ONAP in a nutshell, and uh, the vertical box on the right side here is the OM, the ONAP Operational Manager, that installs and manages uh, ONAP. Basically, in Cloudify, we are actually uh, being integrated in three main parts. One is in the OM uh, to install uh, ONAP, and on top, of course, of a Kubernetes cluster. A Kubernetes cluster could be on top of OpenStack, could be on bare metal if needed. Then uh, we are integrated into the SO. Uh, so from uh, the Beijing release, actually, uh, SO can call Cloudify, and Cloudify can actually get a Tosca blueprint and uh, ac deploy and execute the blueprint. And also we are part of the DCAE, the telemetry part, so we are the controllers there at the DCAE level. Another way to look at it is uh, if you look at uh, Cloudify, is uh, at the left side, it uh, installs uh, on up on top of a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, up there, it's uh, part of the DCA, and here it, you can look at it as part of the controller. So you have SDNC, you have AppC, and if you want to execute a complex uh, topology, uh, a Tosca topology, a distributed topology, you use uh, Cloudify for that. And already there are several uh, telcos that uh, use on up together with Cloudify. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to get into this, but uh, what happens here uh, in a nutshell, so you actually uh, create something in SDC, it create, gets all the Tosca types, it creates the artifacts, actually it creates a CISA file, which uh, in turn is pushed to SO. SO uh, has uh, multiple ways to orchestrate things. One is the BPMN engine. It's more like a Tosca, sorry, it's more like a process-oriented um, flow. So you say, I want to do step A, and from step A, I'm going to step B to step C, so like automaton. Uh, and also it has uh, Tosca using Cloudify, which is intent-based orchestration. You say what you want to orchestrate and not how. So for example, you define 
the higher level abstractions uh, and you don't care about the underlay. So let's say I want to have a connection point between A and B. I would define this connection point, but I don't care if it's running uh, on some kind of an underlay or it uses different kind of routing, but it's the intent how to use it. Or for example, I want to define a firewall between two points. I don't care if it's a firewall from one vendor or another vendor or it can be even a router with ACLs, but uh, in the how, in the plugins, uh, I will implement the how, but the Tosca defines the what and not the how. Uh, so if we look at the OM architecture, so basically uh, you get uh, a blueprint, there is a Tosca blueprint, and uh, this Tosca blueprint uh, is, uh, I will show it to you later, is responsible to uh, install on app. Uh, the installation is actually based on two steps. First, you provision a Kubernetes cluster, and second, uh, which is in an independent step, if you already have a Kubernetes cluster, so you can uh, just use the second blueprint and install the on app components, which are uh, many uh, containers or many services and pods installed often on top of Kubernetes. So this is uh, one cluster. Uh, you see at the top the Kubernetes master. We talk to the Kubernetes master and uh, we can provision workloads and actually all the resources on top of Kubernetes, which means the services, the pods, and, <coughs> and the network and everything. Uh, and it can run uh, on OpenStack or on bare metal. At the, at the bottom, we can deploy another on-app cluster. And the reason for having multiple clusters is uh, because of uh, high availability redundancy, because of load balancing. Sometimes you want to uh, actually distribute the load. Uh, another reason is because of proximity. <coughs> Just. Uh, so uh, you can actually uh, have multiple on-app clusters and you can load balance the uh, load between those clusters. So these are the on-app services. Actually, uh, you have the message bus, you have the SDC, the ANI, so all the uh, containers. Actually, we have more than 100 containers uh, in on-app. And before I continue further, I want uh, first uh, to talk about Tosca and uh, what is Tosca and how we use Tosca. So, uh, as I said, Tosca is uh, intent-based uh, and not uh, how we do things. It defines what we do. <coughs> so, uh, in Cloudify, what we do, we actually use the Tosca blueprint. <coughs> we push it into the Cloudify orchestrator, which passes this blueprint. Uh, it has a core uh, component that knows to uh, uh, take this blueprint and separate uh, the blueprint into uh, the smaller components and parse it and create a plan. And then we have plugins that can interface with uh, different systems uh, like any cloud. So we can run on any cloud, provision workloads, networks, uh, applications on any cloud like AWS, OpenStack, uh, VMware, uh, etc. It can interface any configuration management tools uh, like Chef, Puppet, Ansible, any networking tools uh, like uh, uh, <clears throat> NSX and others, and of course uh, I will touch uh, the, the Kubernetes and containers uh, in more details, but it can provision workloads on top of Kubernetes, but it can do more with Kubernetes. Uh, so it's a model-driven automation and governance. You can say who can execute the blueprints, uh, who can view the blueprints. Uh, you can have different roles of admin and a user, and of course everything in one tenant. It supports multi-tenancy, etc., and it supports a federated model of a master orchestrator and edges. And uh, when you come to edge, it becomes more complicated because sometimes edge doesn't have connectivity to the master orchestrator, and what do you do? So the edge should work autonomously, so you need to have copies of your orchestration, uh, both at the master and the edge, and when there is no connectivity, things about ships or airplanes, uh, so still you need to orchestrate the life cycle um, operations of the workloads there. And uh, we are open source. So basically it's like building the Boeing, uh, that you have many, many vendors building each one of the parts, but uh, what is uh, different here actually is that our parts, uh, you know, uh, is very dynamic. Uh, so each, each vendor actually 
creates the part and the part is constant, it doesn't change. Uh, but uh, in our life, everything changes so fast and we need to make sure we can orchestrate uh, at scale at very uh, dynamic environments. So uh, this I took from uh, the Tosca definition, but uh, let's make it simple. So uh, here I have an example of uh, what is Tosca. Tosca actually defines a graph of uh, <coughs> actually components. Think about a graph uh, in memory. Uh, each component has relationship. One relationship could be contained in, and in this example you can see that I brought up a VM, which is a node, and uh, we have a JBoss container contained in that VM, and we have a CRM application contained in that uh, JBoss container. Okay, so it's from type compute the VM, uh, the container is from type JBoss, and uh, the CRM is from type application. So I can write, like object-oriented, I can write my own types uh, in Tosca and extend it from a base root. Another type is connected to, and you can see that the CRM application is connected to an Oracle application, to a Oracle database that is running on a different VM. Now, on the relationship, I can define lifecycle operations. For example, I can take runtime attributes from uh, Oracle, like the port that Oracle listens to, or some other information, and send it in runtime over the connection, the relationship to the CRM application. So like this, uh, for example, think about uh, edges, so you can create a topology of edge and a master, and uh, things, things between the two. You can create VPN as a relationship, etc. So <clears throat> I'm not going to go deeper into Tosca, just to uh, show you the overall uh, picture here. So you create a Tosca blueprint. The Tosca blueprint is being input uh, to the domain as a domain model to the orchestrator. The orchestrator parses the Tosca model and creates the different uh, nodes and uh, arrows and the con uh, connections. And <clears throat> there is a workflow, an embedded workflow, uh, an install workflow. That's the default workflow that knows to run on each one of the components and uh, uh, instantiates them and provisions them. You can define also your own workflow on the graph, and you can update the graph in real time. So, for example, you can add a node, uh, or you can uh, remove a node, you can change the properties of a given node, and uh, the orchestrator uh, is responsible to execute it. Now, uh, there is the plugins concept that uh, it extends the core by actually interfaces with many different data sources. So let's say tomorrow I want to uh, actually interface with authentication or with uh, a, a uh, kind, of, so I can write a plugin to LDAP. So there are many plugins like uh, to the different clouds, to the different uh, orchestration systems like Kubernetes as a domain orchestrator, uh, to different configuration management tools, etc. So basically, to create a service, uh, you can create one or more blueprints, uh, and uh, you, after you create the blueprint, the same blueprint could be uh, instantiated and executed on, <coughs> on different uh, uh, locations, but uh, using different inputs. So the trick here is to you can use the same blueprint, but give different inputs, so it can create different things based on the same core blueprint, and eventually it will create the graph that I mentioned. So you can have, for example, if you have multiple domains, and if they are similar, but uh, they have different inputs, so each one can have, for example, a, a different um, you know, IP addresses or different management uh, administrators, etc. Think about edges, so edges, uh, you can group edges uh, actually in groups and the edges, the same edges in the same group are the same, but in different locations they could be the same, uh, different, so you can send information uh, to those edges with the same blueprint, just uh, giving different inputs. So if we look now at uh, this uh, Tosca example, so uh, we see that uh, actually we have here uh, a VM, uh, we can create a group of uh, a VM and all its components like the IP address, uh, etc. We connect the VM, as I mentioned, to a Tomcat container and then to a Mongo database. Uh, and here the things are becoming more uh, interesting. We can create a composite service and the composite service basically, uh, let's say, 
uh, we have multiple blueprints. Each blueprint, uh, you can think about uh, uh, the blueprint as a microservice, microservice one and two. Each one can get its inputs as its own lifecycle operations, and it sends output back to the master blueprint. And uh, basically, you can do this uh, on the fly. So uh, you can have uh, logically separate, uh, for example, your application. You can have each VNF in a separate blueprint. You can have a master blueprint. And then you can actually uh, have a, orchestrate uh, those blueprints uh, with, uh, you know, from top-down approach. You can uh, create service chain and change them on the fly. So for example, let's say you have a router, a firewall, and now you want to add a DPI device. So you can, uh, in this example, I run a deployment update and I actually manipulate the graph in memory. So I add the additional VNF and I connect it uh, into the service chain using this uh, deployment pattern. <clears throat> so basically what we, I wanted to show here is that uh, Tosca is very fl flexible. It can actually manage uh, complex topologies, and you can uh, create the topology in a way that uh, it's very modular, like Lego blocks, so uh, each component can run in its own separate blueprint. You can have a master blueprint that ties everything together, and you can change this on the fly and add and remove uh, components, like uh, we see here at the bottom. Uh, now I want to talk uh, about uh, ONAP is actually installed on top of Kubernetes. Before I will get into this, I, will, I want to say what we do at the Kubernetes level. So um, uh, we can provision workloads and resources on top of Kubernetes, but uh, before that you need to bring up the Kubernetes. So there is a Tosca blueprint that brings up Kubernetes. The challenge that we actually uh, encountered in ONAP that uh, when we actually installed it, uh, so the containers were um, actually were uh, by ship or uh, were sent, the pods were sent uh, everywhere to the Kubernetes workers, the minions, uh, but they need to access a shared uh, file system. So we created an NFS share in the blueprint and combined it together. So every container can access the data. Uh, Cloudify also implements the provider interface in Kubernetes. So if Kubernetes wants to scale, so Kubernetes asks uh, Cloudify, hey, I need another VM, it will get another VM, and this will be added as a node to Kubernetes. Also, we implement the service broker. What if you won't need to actually access external services as the, you, you want to refer to them uh, as an internal nat cloud native Kubernetes services? So there is uh, the service broker interface that you can implement a catalog of services and uh, Kubernetes will ask, actually access it as a Kubernetes uh, service, but the services could be on Amazon and could be you know, a database, external database that uh, is not part of uh, the Kubernetes cluster, etc. So these are actually the, the main things that we do around Kubernetes. So, uh, the provider interface to add more uh, infrastructure components to Kubernetes, uh, <coughs> VM, networks, etc. Deploy uh, applications, workloads on top of Kubernetes, and uh, actually also the Kubernetes provider that I mentioned uh, before. Uh, so basically, uh, we are like a sandwich on top of Kubernetes. The provider is... Uh, implemented in a net native Go uh, application, so it can access uh, every cloud and create resources on the cloud. And we have Tosca blueprints that can uh, provision workloads on multiple stacks. So let's say you use Elm uh, charts, so you have uh, you know one Kubernetes cluster in Amazon, another Kubernetes cluster is on-prem, so you can use the same Tosca blueprint to actually run the workloads on multi-cloud. Uh, so, uh, in this example, we see how this looks like. So, uh, we look at uh, first at the Kubernetes. Uh, you can see the visualization of uh, the Kubernetes cluster. And uh, you can see that you have the host here, you have the different networks, the security groups, and um, the Kubernetes node. 
Also, uh, we can uh, actually collect KPIs as part of the Tosca blueprint, and uh, you can actually define in the Tosca blueprints uh, a monitoring component that you say, I want to collect CPU, or that's infrastructure component uh, memory, but you can collect also KPIs from uh, the application itself. For example, number of connections, or uh, something that uh, in is interest for you, and visualize it on uh, the dashboard. Uh, this is the ONAP cluster that we provisioned uh, using uh, Cloudify, so you can see it uh, on OpenStack, so it's on top of OpenStack. Um, and here I want to emphasize that you can take all the ONAP components and provision them on top of Kubernetes, on top of OpenStack or bare metal, but you can also have an hybrid uh, installation. You can define that some of the components will run as containers, pods in Kubernetes, and some of them could, could run as VMs. Uh, so you can have a, you know, a mixture environment, and this is true, not just, a, ONAP is just an example, but you can have an hybrid deployment model that you can actually uh, define some components running on bare metal, some could run on uh, VMs, some could run on pods, and also I have an example that some components are running as function as a service, uh, when I show you the actually some orchestration uh, use cases using ONAP. Uh, just to summarize this part, uh, and then I'll show you the ONAP itself. So basically we have a Tosca uh, blueprint that defines the infrastructure. It defines Kubernetes. Uh, it starts a Kubernetes master with multiple nodes. This is configurable. It also installs the TILA server, which is uh, the Elm client uses it. We have an LM plugin or an LM integration you define in the Tosca blueprint uh, all the Tosca applications, all the on -app applications as Tosca nodes uh, instances, and it will use the LM uh, integration to provision them on top of Kubernetes. LM has values, global and local values, so you can override those values uh, uh, using the LM integration. So you can use the inputs and uh, say whatever I want for example, I want to uh, define global inputs, uh, cluster-wide or on top of multiple clusters, or I want to uh, overwrite those uh, values locally or globally. And uh, everything is here defined with Tosca. And of course, we have the service layer that uh, um, higher level components uh, can interact uh, with uh, the REST API and uh, call Cloudify to do uh, for example, to create a blueprint, to deploy a blueprint and execute it, and even to create a workflow. So let's say, for example, you want to, uh, an example of scaling, uh, you measure the KPIs and you see that uh, the KPI for scaling actually crossed the threshold, so you send it to uh, the OSS or uh, to other system, and this system can uh, actually trigger a workflow and tell Cloudify for this blueprint I need to scale out. Okay, so this is the ONAP portal after you bring up ONAP. So you can see the ONAP. This is the topology of ONAP with all the components. So you can see the portal, uh, the SDC, the robot, console, the message bus, the app C, etc., the ANI. So, and if you see, if you do Kubernetes, kubectl get pods, uh, you can see all the running pods, and the same for ONAP services. Uh, if we want to look at the blueprint, uh, so um, uh, there is the Garrett, uh, the blueprint. Uh, so you have the Tosca blueprint here. So I don't want to, I don't have time to actually go into the blueprint into details, but it is, uh, defines the Tosca DSL. It defines different inputs, uh, imports, so it's basically some definitions of the Tosca, Tosca types uh, that you import and make them as part of the blueprint. It has the input section for the images, uh, the LM version, and then it creates uh, the NFS uh, connectivity that I mentioned for all the nodes and uh, defines the Kubernetes master and uh, the Kubernetes nodes, uh, so, and the security groups, etc. 
So now, uh, after I have a Kubernetes cluster running, I can have multiple Kubernetes clusters. So I can go and provision uh, actually the on-app components on top of it. So basically what I do, I point to the, in this example, to the Tila server or to the, <coughs> I point to the Kubernetes master and I provision on-app on top of this Kubernetes. I can take different on-app components uh, and provision them on different clusters or I can create multiple on-app clusters and uh, define what I want to provision where. So you can see that uh, each type, Tosca type here is very similar. It's from type on-app nodes component. Uh, it defines the same things except for the uh, application. Here it's ANI, AppC, Clamp, etc. So uh, you can go to Garrett actually, and this is the link and you can look at it. Now let's look at uh, interesting use cases. One use case that uh, actually the telco did almost by, by itself with an integrator, uh, is use Cloudify for two things. One, for a catalog. It was for a, a streaming video. So we have different uh, domain uh, network controllers and different media uh, environments. So they wrote an abstraction layer on top of it. And uh, they used a Tosca blueprint for first uh, defining the catalog of services, what uh, the user can do with this, what services the user can consume. And after that, uh, they used ONAP and they integrated Cloudify uh, as part of ONAP. So they pushed the Tosca Blueprint into the ONAP uh, SO, Service Orchestrator. And uh, this Service Orchestrator was calling Cloudify to uh, actually orchestrate the different domain controllers. Uh, at the top, uh, they used the, the TM Forum uh, API layer uh, actually to uh, get integrated with their OSS BSS system. And this layer, actually the API translated requests from the OSS BSS into Cloudify. Another use case is, uh, I'm, I want to go more to the edge, so we uh, also did it with uh, Big Telco. Uh, we created an on-app cluster uh, with three edges. Each edge uh, was a Kubernetes um, cluster. Uh, we defined uh, the services in uh, SDC and pushed it into SO, and SO was calling Cloudify. In this case, uh, it was a connected car example. So think about it, how many times you use uh, Waze or Google Maps and you run into traffic jam and then it tells you turn right, okay? But you're already stuck in a traffic jam. So we calculated a, um, a rectangle around each one of the edges and we know the density of number of cars there. And uh, basically, uh, we can tell you, hey, you have to go through another route. So before uh, continuing, I'll show you uh, what we did, and then I will explain about the architecture. Uh, we use in this architecture function as a service deployed on top of Kubernetes. And uh, you can see here, uh, you can see here that uh, we have different car types like uh, Ford, Toyota, and we use an IoT gateway for that. And uh, let me show you uh, what happened. Uh, I will go quickly here. So we visualized everything on a Google map. Uh, so we sent uh, information from the car, so you can see the density information, and also we sent a prediction back to the car to tell it where to go. So we used the Google map actually, and who is familiar with Boston here know that uh, you have many times traffic jams here. So we created the Tosca node to create a traffic jam here. Each dot represents a different uh, car type, like Mazda, Toyota, Ford, etc. Now I will do a fast forward. Uh, you see the cars are uh, getting to the traffic jam, and I will send some of the cars uh, to the destination point uh, using another route. So basically, you see the cars that are going uh, on this route uh, get to the destination much faster than the other cars. Okay, so let's continue. So basically, uh, uh, we used here uh, a crino 
uh, and Kubernetes on top of it, and Kubeless as the function as a service platform. <coughs> we use an IoT gateway. Uh, uh, actually, I show you. We use an IoT gateway to get the car request. It's a simulation from car request, but uh, we want to do it also in real time, in real live uh, experiment. We had a fast engine that uh, automatically defined the Tosca type for each car type, like for Ford, Toyota. Uh, we kept all the locations of the car in the MongoDB database, and uh, Cloudify, using the Tosca blueprint, uh, orchestrated everything, and also we visualized everything in Grafana and Prometheus. Uh, if I go one slide here, you can see the ONAP. So ONAP orchestrated everything. We had different edges, and ONAP ran the blueprints uh, and the workloads on all these edges. And uh, basically, the challenges were here, actually, that we encountered is uh, to define things dynamically. Uh, let's say I now discover a new car type, I want to add it to the model dynamically. Uh, and uh, with the capabilities of what I mentioned before, to do everything dynamically, uh, so we can create uh, uh, in the graph, we can manipulate the graph uh, in real time and add uh, different car types to the model itself uh, without uh, the need to tear down the deployment. And of course, when you add a new car type, you need to put the function in place and you need to connect it correctly uh, to the IoT gateway and get requests and uh, do everything as it was initially defined. Okay, let me go quickly. This is the model that we created with SDC. So you can see the IoT gateway in SDC. Uh, you can see the Kubernetes master, you can see the Kubernetes IoT gateway service, and you can see the definition for the functions uh, Mazda, Toyota, and Ford for each one of uh, uh, the car types. And this is the Kubernetes itself uh, and the metadata for it. So this model was uh, pushed uh, to SDC uh, using a, a Tosca blueprint, uh, and uh, it was uh, pushed to uh, SO in ONAP, and uh, it was called Cloudify to orchestrate the things here. <coughs> now, uh, things that we learned about Kubernetes, we, with function as a service, we can scale Kubernetes at three different levels. One is uh, in Kubeless or in any other fast uh, engine, we have a way to define if there is, are more car types from type Toyota, for example, I can create more functions of Toyota to accept the, the load. Uh, I can scale also the native way in Kubernetes, so you can define scaling in Kubernetes, and that's easy. And also, as I mentioned before, uh, we implement the provider interface, so if Kubernetes needs another infrastructure node to add uh, workers, so it can call the inter infrastructure uh, provider interface, and uh, this will call Cloudify, and Cloudify will add the node into a running cluster. All those uh, scaling uh, ways are dynamic and uh, uh, it is easy to scale at each one of the levels. Uh, okay, so now let's talk about uh, multiple ONAP uh, clusters. So you need multiple ONAP clusters uh, uh, because of load balancing, many load balancing and high availability. So you can create multiple clusters and define what runs where. Uh, and uh, let's uh, think about uh, federated Kubernetes first. So what is federated Kubernetes? Actually, you know what is federated already. Kubernetes is federated by itself because it's node federation. It runs different workloads on different nodes. Now, federated Kubernetes, Kubernetes in a nutshell as an API certain gateway, actually, the API for Kubernetes. It has an etcd for configuration, and then it has controllers to bring uh, the workloads to the desired states, the pods to the desired state, as you define in uh, the YAML files. Now, go one layer above it, so think about the federated API, so you can define, for example, I want to run object foo on multiple clusters, so it will go to each one of the clusters and uh, execute it. So the same, you have etcd for uh, federated uh, configuration, and you have uh, controllers to define the desired state. So you can run uh, workloads on top of uh, Kubernetes uh, in uh, multiple clusters. 
Now, sometimes it's, the world is not only Kubernetes and you need to tie it to different uh, things outside Kubernetes. Sometimes you need to run it on VMs. Sometimes you need to create VPNs. You need to create some uh, network connectivities. So for that, you need the, a glue layer uh, on top of it. And uh, here we use Cloudify to first to define all this federation and uh, actually define workloads on top of it. So I will do fast forward. Um, so there are many use cases for from federation. I go to Edge Cloud. Many use cases for Edge Cloud. Think about that you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, actually uh, open stack in each one of the ships. Uh, so people use it for, uh, you know, there are many uh, ships that you need it uh, for. People use it for gaming or for whatever they need. So you can have uh, open stack on a plane, airplane. So there are many Edge use cases. IoT, etc. So, uh, and as Michael Dell said, the edge will be much bigger than the cloud itself. So, um, the reason for ed having edge and uh, think about it tomorrow, the central cloud is gonna broken to smaller clouds, to the edge clouds. So the reason are two, the reasons are twofold. One is latency. You cannot send everything uh, to the main cloud. Let's say you need latency under 20 milliseconds. Uh, so uh, you need uh, an edge, and uh, let's say uh, you don't want to send enormous data points, uh, uh, I call it the tsunami uh, uh, of data points to the master cloud because uh, it's a lot and uh, you're going to overwhelm uh, the master cloud and uh, you cannot keep uh, all this information. So the main two reasons are latency and uh, lots of data points from IoT, AI, AR, machine to machine, smart cities, etc. So in this case, um, how you are going to manage this? Uh, so I already touched uh, on the serverless edge, but the challenges are enormous here. Uh, you need to define a complex model and you need to do a service composition of multiple master and edges. Now, what do you do when there is no network between the edge and the master? So the edge should work autonomously. Also, the edge has uh, limited resources, resource constraints. What do you do with security? Uh, who is allowed to talk from the edge outside or from the edge inside? Or what do you do with security and tenancy inside the edge itself? Uh, and many different things. Think about a satellite environment where the bandwidth is scarce. Uh, so how do you manage this? So basically, uh, uh, I just quote someone here that say that even from operational uh, point of view, we are going to have more edges than people. So how we can manage this? So um, just to finish this, I don't have enough time. So there are uh, actually many models to uh, define and orchestrate an edge. One model is to have master orchestrator that actually uh, uses a control component at the edge, but the master orchestrator actually manages everything and just send operations to the edge. A more uh, uh, federated or distributed way to do it is to have a local edge orchestrator that is autonomous. It will run the lifecycle operations like the configure, provision, install, manage, even healing and scaling at the edge itself. And there is the master orchestrator. Uh, the master orchestrator will connect to the local orchestrator, and when there is no connectivity, uh, it will work on its own. But then when there is connectivity, it will actually uh, keep the data that it collected and send it to the master orchestrator. Now, I see that uh, uh, not far from today, we are going to have lots of edges with connected cars, uh, augmented reality, uh, and uh, IoT. So the master cloud will serve as a learning point. Like, let's say uh, you learn something at one of the edge and you want to send the data to the master orchestrator that can send it to, to the other edges or, and do AI at the master cloud. But the edge will need to work autonomously and uh, be smart enough to manage all the components that are connected to it. And just to finish this, uh, I don't have time to go into a federated model and managers of managers and cross-edge workflows, but uh, I just want to finish it with uh, some examples here. So basically, uh, we want uh, to have a service composition using Tosca, and uh, you want to have it uh, as a Lego blocks, so you can uh, combine uh, different uh, components together 
create a master service and you can create multiple master services, have a catalog, and each one can consume each one of the services. And this could be used, uh, you know, for a, a smart city, transportation, branch offices. We have the VCP and SD1 solutions today for smart home and cities, uh, for military and defense, energy, uh, etc. So uh, there are lots of use cases and uh, the challenge is to make it simple and uh, to define uh, you know, the topology and what you want to do intent-based and not to get into complexity. So I see that I'm right on time. Uh, uh, let's, uh, someone ask questions? Yeah. So I have, I have several questions, but I try to formulate in a single one. So um, are you using uh, Tosca, the um, extra standardized one, or you have a flavor? Uh, yeah, we are part of the Tosca Oasis. Yeah, we uh, support the Tosca standard. Uh, we many times run ahead of Tosca, so we need to define our own types uh, and push it uh, back to the Tosca committee and try to, to actually convince uh, everyone that this is needed. And this is based on uh, real use cases that you need to do. So, uh, and, and according to this, um, the blueprints uh, could be used by other vendors as well. So, how deeply do I lock my infrastructure into the Cloudify if I'm using? Uh, which uh, which ones do you refer to? I mean, um, created a blue blue sprint, uh, blueprints uh, are probably use, useful only for, uh, by Cloudify. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so you can uh, d define the Tosca types and uh, use another parser to go and parse them. Yeah, another question? Okay, thank you.